Hi, I'm sitting beside my digital twin here recording a video and I'm thinking to replace him with a GPD model because he doesn't bring too much values in videos and do you think it's possible to fine-tune a language model to replace him? Yes, it's definitely possible to replace your digital twin with a fine-tuned GPT model. You could script your responses and interactions or even use Got the it. model okay. to generate Got spontaneous it. replies. Got it. For replacing you, I don't even need a massive model like GPT-4. I can use a small language model like Phi-3, which is the best one, that can be deployed in low latency, low cost, and even locally, so no need for internet, and even it can deploy that on my mobile phone to fully replace you. It was my pleasure working with you for all these years, and thanks for having me in your videos. I was kidding. Of course, I know you're kidding. Let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. All right, here's the news. Just almost one week ago in Microsoft Build, one of the news was Phi 3 family of models, which are small language models previously developed by Microsoft, are now available on Microsoft Azure Studio, AI Studio, and even Microsoft Azure Machine Learning, which we're going to talk about that. So Phi 3 are a family of small language models that can certainly do a lot of similar things that you have seen with other even large language models, let's say a multi-model that they do understand images, text as an input, but these are extremely smaller models compared to large language model, let's say GPT-4, but it's still capable of doing a lot of things. So the good news is because they're small, they can be certainly implemented in scenarios that you have limited resources of a hardware or you want to have a low latency solution your use case is not that complex and you want to save some cost instead of paying for large language models that they're not necessary these are perfect choices we're going to talk about that actually when you need these small language models like phi 3 which phi 3 is the best one so far among all small language models with the same scale of size but now the good news is it is available on Azure ecosystem. That means it can be easily get implemented and leveraged, which we're going to talk about that shortly. But before we go further, let's talk about Phi by itself and Phi 3, which is the latest version of these models. So right now, Phi 3, what we are talking today as of now, there are mainly four different type of Phi 3 models available. So Phi 3 version, which is a multi-model, that means it understands images. It can. It is actually customized for uh, interpreting charts, tables, and images, which is pretty great, actually. I tried that by myself. As you can see, it has just 4.2 billion parameters. Some of them can be even implemented in your mobile phone. They're as small as that. So you don't need a crazy compute to, to actually host them or run them. Let's say you're running these models in an environment that you don't have any access to internet. You want to run it locally on your own servers. So that can be a good choice when you don't have access even to the internet. You can still have a language model do some tasks for you. Phi3 Mini has 3.8 billion parameters, but it comes with two type of size up token limits. So 120K token limit and 4K, which is really, really impressive. Phi3 Small is slightly larger with 7 billion parameters. So that means this model is more capable. So it needs more resources to get inference, but still a small and medium, which sort of considered to be the largest ones among all. It has 14 billion parameters. It comes again with two uh, window size of context length and the best one from the performance perspective. Although it's available on Hugging Face, you can give it a try, but it recently came on Azure AI Studio and Azure Machine Learning, which is the news we are gonna talk about that. So here they're talking about how they have optimized that. This is an example of interpreting a chart with the answers, which is really impressive for a model size like this. But this one is comparing uh, the size of these models versus their capability. And as you can see, as they're saying, Phi3 is really, um, performing better compared to other models with the same size like Llama, uh, Mixtral, so on and so forth. And Phi3 Small, the one that has more parameters, obviously has potentially better performance in some cases. So now the question is, uh, when do I need to choose these small language models? This is the main part actually to talk about that. So when your use cases are simpler 
and you want to have a model that is accessible, easy to use with limited resources, and they can be easily fine-tuned, you can actually fine-tune these models with lower cost, these are good candidates. Or when you want to run these models or solution locally on a device on edge that doesn't require extensive reasoning and, and it needs quick response, then a small language models like Phi3 is a great one actually. So give it a try. Now they have also added some benchmarks on different well-known data sets that how good they are, let's say in MMLU for Phi3 versus some other models and as you can see it's beating all of them so I'm not going through all these references again. But now I'm going to show you what are different ways to implement that locally or through Azure AI Studio or Azure Machine Learning. So here's my Azure Machine Learning Studio. And as you can see, Azure Machine Learning Studio has a section called Model Catalog that has lists of models, open source one or developed by Microsoft, uh, Meta, like Llama. You can select and deploy. It's similar to Hugging Face. But Model Catalog is available also on Azure AI Studio. So the same thing. Now, if I search Phi, it should show me the families of Phi models. There you go, Phi 3 Mini, Vision, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Let's say if I'm going to go with Vision, with 120K token limit, this one, because it's Vision and the parameters are a bit higher, it might need more comp more resources to get deployed. So in this section, it talk about what the model is, how they have trained the model, how long it took, what was the training size, so on and so forth some information about the benchmarking results of the model, what they can do. This one has vision capability, so it can do OCR, chart, and table understanding. And if you scroll all the way down, it will talk about some resources needed for deploying this. So this one, for example, needs GPU, and they have tested that over these GPUs. I don't think I have actually quota for deploying that on GPU, but I can give it a try. So here, you can try the model without even deploying that. You can upload an image here. It responded to me quickly. This is just for a test. Again, similar to Hugging Face, what you have seen. But if I click on Deploy, just easily, this one is saying that, okay, I don't have quota actually to implement that, but if I go to more options, this is te technically what you will see. You can create an endpoint, give it a name. For example, this is my 5.3 endpoint that I'm going to deploy. Oh, it shouldn't be spaced there, I think. Uh, okay, there you go. So some typical settings that you set up on Azure ML endpoint, so nothing really new here, how you authenticate to this API. So imagine that you're creating an API out of this model and you want to call it, so it is asking you how you want to authenticate to that, what compute type you need to get deployed. So I keep the results as is. This is the model I'm deploying that, correct. You can give it a name, you can change the timeout setting, some other information about the threshold of failures and stuff, how you can initially give it a try, the timeout. If you want to capture some logs to fetch it to application insights, you can actually enable that and some tagging if you want to. So I don't want to have any of them. I don't need any code and environment setting for this because they already know what Phi3 needs for deploying the model. So easy, I click on next. And here's the part that I need a virtual machine to deploy that. And because I need GPU for this and I don't have any GPU available, I'm not allowed to do that. As soon as I'm clicking on next, it should be all good. It created an endpoint for me so I can call these models within the resources that I set up in my subscription, not other places that I have no access. For example, like GPT-4 said, is hosted locally for me in my own Azure environment. But this is just one way of deploying that model. The second way, which is a new one, called serverless endpoints. So if you go to the endpoints on Azure ML, there's a new tab which is on preview called serverless endpoints. So that means instead of me right now going to deploy Phi3 Vision model and pay for the GPU running 24-7, I can pay as I go, not paying for a continuous virtual machine running 24-7. So great choice. I click on create. It is asking me the list of models. Some models are available for serverless. These are all the models actually, and some of them are on the specific regions. For example, ECUS2 is the one that has Phi3 available for serverless. So I select Phi3, let's say let's go with the mini one. I click on select, that's it. It's not even asking me to do some other stuff. I already have a deployment created, which is here. That's why it is grayed out, but it is not asking me for a compute, for a resource. It's like how you call GPT models, like OpenAI models through an API, which is serverless. This is similar to that, and you just pay as you go. So I checked out the pricing and terms, and I click on pricing to see when it says pay as you go, how it is charging me based on the number of tokens, calls, whatever. So when I scroll down, I all the way realize that for the pricing of five models, when you deploy as a serverless, 
it will be provided soon so no information that i can share from the pricing yet but stay tuned so going back to my serverless i click on deploy and it appeared here if i click on it my deployment is successful here's my api um endpoint my api key i can share it with anyone that is needed to call this and i can even test it on fly here to make sure my deployment is working properly i are gonna say hi and there you go my deployment is done it really took me just one or two minutes with just a simple click i was able to create this serverless pay as you go or as i showed you you can from model catalog deploy on your own virtual machine environments in your own azure subscription if you have quota all right so i'm gonna delete this actually in, in point uh after this call given that i shared with you the, the endpoint stuff but i wanted to show you first of all then you can use a small language models what is the best small language model so far compared to other models like llama stuff which is 5.3 and it got available on azure so you can, you can test it out uh, with minimum amount of time and effort needed and this was just a news appeared on microsoft build so i thought that worth to certainly create a video and talk to you about some recent news i hope you enjoyed the video if you did i would be very thankful if you liked the video and write down your comment which uh is pretty hard for me for me all right thank you all it doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. So dream big, my friends, believe in yourself, and take action. Till next video, take care.